let me know if this sounds familiar. You built your brand new build. You put everything together. You spent time and effort cable managing, using custom cables, getting everything as perfect as you can. And then you peel off that final peel. You put your system in place, you turn it on, and then you notice ever so slightly, your GPU is crooked. And then you realize you can't straighten it. Congratulations, that is GPU sag. And if you hadn't noticed it, and you are noticing it now, you're welcome. And I'm sorry, you are now cursed with this knowledge. Hello and welcome. My name is Wolfie and you are watching Greater Than Pi. So GPU sag, what is it? How do we fix it? Is it a problem? And should you trust other people's solutions? We're gonna to touch on that one actually. So what is GPU sag? Well, for the most part, GPU sag is mostly cosmetic. It happens when your GPU is particularly heavy, doesn't have enough support, doesn't have a backplate, etc. This decrepit GPU that really needs a deep clean at this point is a R6850. This is a, an old, 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 old AMD. Actually, I think it was still ATI. Might have been ATI still, GPU. The reason I bring this one up is this was what GPUs looked like a long time ago. And because of that, when they were built, they were built with the actual support being the PCB itself. So the next generation past this one was this one, which was the 7850. And as you can see, they already started to realize that the shrouds and everything were going to start being a problem. This one was actually built with an overbuilt aluminum shroud around it. This is back when XFX actually like had like really quality cards. This one, unfortunately, uh, the fan is dead on it. Uh, so I'd have to see if I could fix this, but I've been using it as a decoration because it's just, it's a beautiful looking card, right? Eventually we would get to the generation that had this cooler on it, which was a 5700 XT. At this point, you can see that this is significantly more cooler than the last two generations. And because of that, this without the GPU is already heavier than this, which has a full aluminum shroud on it. As GPUs got heavier, it became harder and harder for the PCIe slot plus the PCIe brackets to hold them in place. So yes, GPUs that are getting heavier and longer are becoming harder and harder to keep straight. The first GPU I actually had this issue with was the GTX 1080 Founders Edition, which if uh, you remember correctly, is just a long boy of a card. Now, fortunately, I haven't had this issue on any of my modern GPUs. The thing is though, not all modern cards are gonna have issues. For example, this MSI, card, which is actually related to the GPU that we're gonna be actually doing this on, it doesn't have this issue. And that's because it's actually about equal distance from this point to this point out. And it also has a reinforced backplate on it, which is one of the ways that manufacturers have gotten around this. And for the most part, most coolers, as long as they're up to dual slot, don't have a problem. So as you get into the triple slot coolers that you start to have issues and also really long situations like the GTX 1080 Ti, which was so long that they put a lightsaber in it for a collector's edition. So we have a problem and it has been affecting GPUs as they get bigger and bigger and more power hungry. How bad is it though? Like, is this something that will kill your GPU in the long run? Fortunately, no, most of the time. There was a case with the 5700 XTs where some of the coolers were so heavy that it was actually pulling the thermal paste away from the cooler itself. Cooler right here, this MSI one, actually was guilty of doing this. And that was not because the GPU was particularly heavy, but because the mounting hardware was only four single screws. And this was a cost saving design as opposed to a uh, practical one. If you look at this MSI card, which is also the same, I guess, uh, tier of card, it has those same four screws. These are actually for mounting purposes, but then it has additional ones that screw both the backplate and the PCB together so that, and the shroud together. So that this is all just one uniform piece that is holding up the entire GPU. 
And in most cases, if it's like that, it's completely fine. But in that weird case of that last generation, uh, it would have caused issues and will continue to cause issues the older the cards get, the weaker the thermal paste gets, the weaker those screws get because they will loosen over time. So maybe doing a little bit of preventative maintenance might help it or doing what I did, which was installing a water block instead because uh, it's really hard to have issues when you've screwed the entire thing to a giant metal block that, uh, well, connects the entire card to itself, so. But aside from that, the only other issue is going to be, well, cosmetic and more importantly on you, the viewer. Because if you are bothered by this, if you are looking this video up on Google right now and this video is coming up for you, then it means that it is bothering you. That, or you were just scared that your GPU is gonna snap in half or something, but I, I bet you it's more of the second half. In fact, actually, if you found this on YouTube, you probably had to get through like Jay's two cents and like, which brings us to our next point, the solution. <laughs> so how do you solve this? Well, there are really one real answer and then a bunch of answers that Jay did. And you know what? Because I'm a, I, I'm a good sport about these things, I'm gonna put a link to his video about this. And he, he's got some fun ways to do it. But the way that I'm gonna talk about is cheap, it's easy, and honestly, works 100% of the time. So what is the solution? Well, it is to add a GPU support bracket. Now, the GPU in question that we just had to do this to is a 6800 XT Tri-Cooler by MSI. Yep, it's the bigger brother of the one that I was holding up that didn't have an issue. It is so big and heavy that MSI actually shipped it with a bracket to install. Unfortunately, that bracket did only okay in the case that I was installing it in, and due to the fact that I actually use add-in cards, didn't work as well as it was intended to. That being said, this one is a bit of a unique situation because that was actually formed to the shape of the GPU, which is actually one of the better options when it comes to these kinds of GPU support brackets. When installing a GPU support bracket, you have to take into consideration the shape of the GPU, position of the bracket, and how the bracket installs. Now, there's sort of is a hierarchy in how these brackets actually work. First off, you have what I consider the absolute best case scenario, and that is one built into the case. Bracket Design and Cooler Master have actually been doing this a lot lately. I think Lee and Lee is also starting to do it as well, where they come with an accessory that can be used as a GPU support bracket. It actually discreetly mounts somewhere in the case right around where the GPU would be, especially if it's a long GPU. And personally, I prefer this because, well, it's discreet, but it unfortunately is not a standard feature yet on cases. And while there are some cases like the 5000D that I'm using currently, the NZXT H500, um, actually any of those ones with that cable management bar, that could easily add that feature in the future or even sell an accessory for it in the future. Unfortunately, there's just really not that many options in it as of yet. The second, and technically the one that works the best in this case in particular, is a freestanding GPU support bracket. Now this works one way specifically, and that is by mounting to the bottom of your case or PSU shroud and having a little tiny piece that juts out and holds the GPU at the end. Physics work here, you know, two points of load bearing equal straight and leveled and even. And because you don't really need that much force, you don't really need it to torque on it in any way, so they don't have to have any screws or anything to really hold them in place. The one I have literally has a couple of magnets, RGB, because, you know, I wanted to go that route and I like RGB, and uh, it literally just kind of, I've got it set like to the back of the case, it looks nice. And with these, you can position them a couple different ways. There are two models. There's the version that goes past the GPU or in some of the lower cases will actually go up to the GPU. And there's the screw model, which is a bit more hidden and can be, well, tucked away a little bit nicer. Personally, I prefer the kind of flashiness that comes with it, outlines the GPU kind of nicely. And uh, I mean, it's preference at this point, but both of them work kind of the same way. You pick a spot on the GPU that you want the support to be on and you just position the holder accordingly. And since there are no screws or anything to mount it down, they're relatively easy. You just have to wedge them in there and just try not to torque it too much. 
Super simple. The last and least effective one is the PCIe based folding system. And the reason that this one's the least effective is because there's so many variants and cases and GPUs. Personally, I do have one in this case, but it's actually there as decoration. They look cool. They look really good. And in some cases that have really good PCIe support on the actual screws, it works great. And in some GPUs that don't have 90% fans across them, it works great. But in this case, uh, we wouldn't even be able to use the GPU bracket even if we could uh, get it to work because, well, it'd be touch and fan. Due to this, this GPU support bracket is unfortunately not going to be used uh, for support very much, but it is an effective way to make someone look pretty good. I mean, I think it looks great with the two parallel lines and then the one line going the other way, but <laughs> That's again, it's subjective. And you can get these on Etsy with like different graphics on it. Um, I've actually seen a couple of places that do like full on custom stuff. So yeah, it's pretty cool. But on Amazon, you can usually pick these up for just $15. Both of these by up here are $15. So realistically, it's a cheap solution to a problem. And realistically, it's a problem in name only. Now, Jay does have some invisible solutions. And as I said, there's a link in the description and a card up here for his video on it. But if you are like me and you really just want to maybe make it look like a decoration in itself, I will also leave links to the up here GPU support brackets. I recommend the freestanding one as opposed to the PCIe screw in one. But if you want this one for decoration like I've done, you can do that as well. Oh yeah, and the other thing about these that's actually really cool is you can daisy chain them together and they're addressable. That is all you're gonna need to know about GPU set. For the most part, it's harmless. And more importantly, it's a cosmetic issue. So the solution should be kind of cosmetic. That's where we're gonna end today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video, consider giving it a like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Wolfie, out.